I'm Dr. Paul Boyens, wildlife conservationist and also co-author of the book Release Captive Bred to Truly Wild. The book is a reflection of my lifelong dedication to the well-being of wildlife in Africa and also the story behind the study we did on the release of captive bred lions to their rightful place back into the wild. I'm delighted to announce to you that uh, as of right now the book will be available for purchase. The link to the purchase site is at the bottom of the screen. Let me explain the reason behind the book. Uh, I decided to write the book because I believe that there are m many more people who would read a book filled with photographs than there are who would read a boring thesis in a scientifically written style. And it was important for me to get the message across to as many as possible people. Um, so knowing that I am a I am a scientist more than I am a novel writer, I approached a good friend of mine called Gustav Fenter, who was really excited to help me write the book. So um, we are collaborating on the writing of the book. With the, the photographs we used, most of them were taken during the period of the study and also some of them were taken by good friends and professional photographers. You should follow them on Instagram. Um, so anyway, so I got some, some really professional people to help me with the photographs and, and then obviously I got, I got Gustav who is a well-known writer in South Africa to help me um, carry the message over that I wanted to carry over in the right way in a readable and in an enjoyable way um, for everyone to read. My vision is to get this book on the reception counter or coffee table at every single lodge in this beautiful country of ours. The idea of the PhD was actually born from the release of the lions. The release of the lions actually um, was part of the development of a wildlife reserve in the Waterberg region of South Africa. So the lions were released in 2017, early 2017 we released four female and one male captive bred lion. By the end of that same year we realized that they were doing really well. Obviously we um, monitored them quite closely after the release uh, to make sure that they were adapting well and they were feeding and, and so forth. The study was um, ideal because of the the politics surrounding captive bred lions in the wildlife industry in South Africa. The farmer that donated the lions to the reserve, um, he had an idea that we should publish something scientifically based, something that could be um, scrutinized um, to, to ensure the legitimacy of the, of the information. And I applied to the University of the Free State and I was appointed um, a promoter to, to the project, which is Professor H. O. Deval. And we spent about another three years taking all of the data that we had gathered up to that point and further on, and analyzing that data and turning it into a thesis, um, which later allowed me to be granted my PhD, which I'm very grateful for. Anyone can, um, release a bunch of lions on, on a wildlife reserve large enough to contain them and if they do well they can tell that story by a campfire or write to any magazine in the world but um, yeah I, I think the scientific approach gave it the credibility. Okay can you share a standout moment or experience from your years spent in the field of these lions? <sighs> it would be difficult to, to to name just one, you know, we had, I had so many special moments, uh, moments, close calls with, with working with the lions. Um, I mean, they are dangerous, so um, we, we got to realize that as well. Um, working at night with these animals, are, it increases the level of danger as well, and not being able to see all of them or, or other dangers around you. Me, the highlight of the project or something I carry very dearly um, is when I found the den site of one of the females. 
that was really special to me. I had the opportunity to walk to within filming distance of the cubs because I knew the female wasn't close. Even though the butterflies did persist, um, that, that was really special. It, it felt like I was let inside something really special about a lion's life. And also the the birth of the first F2 generation lion cubs on that reserve. Um, that, that was groundbreaking because it proved a, a lot of things and it, it to me it proved that these lions were you know far beyond the point where we had to intervene or where they where they needed our assistance or help or interference. Working together with the management and the staff on that reserve where the lions were um, created some great memories. Companionship and friendships were built um, because of the situation that you're in, you trust each other with your lives. Um, and I learned a lot. And I got to share that very special moments also with my family, with my wife and my kids, which I think is something I certainly didn't grow up with. And I hope that one day they would appreciate it, but that that is something very special. Do you think it's important for people to understand the journey of these captive bred lions to the wild? I think it's important for people to understand that before you create an opinion, you need to have the facts to back that up. And there is a lot of emotionally based opinion about captive bred lions, which I completely understand because there is this criminal element within that industry, which is, um, apart from the fact that it's appalling, it's, it's really annoying because it doesn't do damage only to those farmers or owners who don't abide by the laws and the rules and the ethics. Um, it affects the entire industry and it's an industry that has created many jobs. It's an industry that has created enormous wealth in South Africa. Um, and it's an industry that has brought several species of African and specifically South African wildlife from the brink of extinction. I mean, if you think of Sable antelope, roan antelope, black wildebeest, springbuck, blessbuck, pontebok, all of those species have been saved, literally saved due to wildlife breeding, wildlife farming, wildlife ranching, call it what you want. These guys who have been involved in, in that industry and supported the industry since the mid 1970s, the, the conservation role that they play is enormous. and. The state of the wildlife preserves in South Africa um, that are not in private ownership is, is something that's very worrying. Um, we're losing rhinos at an alarming rate, yet the private wildlife industry has bred, so to speak, more rhino in the past 20 years than all of the national parks put together but it does come at a cost. I hope for one that the this project and Lions then specifically can be the custodian for for conservation from a private wildlife ranching perspective. And also I'm hopeful that it would shed some light on opinions that are being used to drive agendas by media and uh, certain organizations um, about lions and about captive bred lions and about the situation of lions. Um, I'm sure people are fed a lot of information about lions and I know a lot of it is not true. It's, it's not entirely true. Um, lions in certain parts in Africa are, are, are certainly in a lot of danger of, of becoming extinct in that localities, definitely. In South Africa, we have an overpopulation of lions. Um, so between reserves, what we call the wild managed population, um, the reserve owners are, are struggling to get rid of excess lions. So they're actually practicing um, contraceptive measures um, in different forms and ways. Um, so the question then begs, why, why would you do a vasectomy on a male lion if the species is endangered, you know? Doesn't make sense. 
Um, so I'm hopeful this project's shed some light on, on that. And um, I, I certainly hope um, people learn to do their own research before they believe the opinions and the mainstream media, which has disappointed us many times uh, for the sake of making money. Well, that's, that's my main hope. So in South Africa, we have identified three lion populations, the one being wild lions, which basically are found in um, national and provincial parks, meaning that um, no parameters of those populations are controlled or interfered with in any way by management. So if you think of, for example, the Kruger National Parks lions, they are identified as the wild population. They are basically about between two and two and a half thousand of them. Okay. Then we have what they call the wild managed population, which are um, the lion, all the lions um, between about, I think it's grown now to about 60 or 65 privately owned reserves. But most of those lions come from national or provincial parks in any way. So they were taking a lot of them from a Dikwe and Pilansberg and um, a very small portion uh, from the Khalakhadi. And they were released there and now they're moving in between. So you have this meta population. So the wild managed population uh, is reckoned to be about between four and 600 lions, which is not a lot. And it's, it's those that the contraceptive measures are, are being practiced on um, because of the um, inability of those private wildlife reserves, which are all fenced down, even though there are some of them are really big, they're still fenced down. So they have a carrying capacity for large predators, such as lion, like they have a carrying capacity for any, any other animal that they want, that they would like to keep. Um, so anyways, then you, then you get the captive bred population, which consists of about anything between eight and 12,000 lions. But nobody really knows, not even the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment, which is the very department who allowed the industry to start. They are the ones who um, hand out the permits for these um, breeding operations to take place is a lot of politics surrounding that. So the minister has recently decided that the industry has to be closed down for several reasons. Uh, one being that it causes apparently causes damage to the brand South Africa. And, you know, if they close it down, what do we do with those eight to 12,000 lions? Let's say it's less, let's say it's 5,000 lions. That's if, if it's only 5,000, it's, it's more than double the wild population. So where do we go with them? What do we do with them? Um, certainly euthanizing them or, or getting rid of them in any other way um, would be certainly unethical in many people's books. And also it would cause a lot of public outcry. And also how would they compensate these guys who, who I mean, it's a business. Uh, who's going to voluntarily give up um, their business, which cost them millions of rands? You know, so so that's the one dilemma. Uh, all of the reserve owners or managers have a, have a very large responsibility in making sure that the wild managed population doesn't become too large, because once again we have nowhere to go with these lions. Um, you know, exchanging lines between parks can only happen at certain times and, and it's, it's limited. Um, but already, um, if, if, if you ask uh, 60 of the reserves, maybe one of them would be willing to take in a new adult male for, um, for the sake of getting some new genetics into your population. So that is why these, why these guys take action by using contraceptive measures like vasectomies on males or hysterectomies or and you also want that natural sort of process in your lion population as well so you want them you want a new male lion to come in take tenure over a pride and then <clears throat> create larger prides um, you know females come in heat 
so um, you don't want to change the behavior of the lines by the contraceptive measures. So there's also chemical contraceptive measures that, that can be taken, um, but everything has its pros and its cons. Um, and I'm sure uh, everyone believes that they are doing it the right way. And if it works for them, that's great. Um, but it is important to, to take note of what works for you in your environment and in your business model. Because at the end of the day, a private wildlife reserve and a state-owned wildlife reserve is exactly that. Um, the, the wildlife, um, that is the fauna and the flora, that is the commodity that we use to generate revenue. It's, it's nothing else. There is a monetary value attached to having something like the African lion on your reserve. It attracts a special or a specific type of tourist and that generates revenue, that creates jobs and it has that knock-on effect. So if people think there's no monetary value on, on wildlife, I, I believe that I would like to disagree. If we do not find wild spaces for these animals to go in and, and um, rewilding captive bred lions is not confined to South Africa. So the African lion you can you can separate in four clades genetically. So we have the western clade and the central and then the eastern and the southern. So the eastern and the western according to published data are, are more similar genetically and the eastern and the southern clades of, of lion populations are more similar genetically. So, I mean, captive bred lions <clears throat> um, can easily be introduced into wild areas as far up as, uh, say for instance, the northern parts of Mozambique, easily. But we, we have absolutely no idea what the genetic makeup of the captive bred lion population looks. We, we, we don't know what it looks like because there's no stud book of them. There, there's no record of it. But that can easily be acquired. You know, we can get that. So I'm thinking if, if we do not use the captive bred lions and if the minister of um, the DFFE, Minister Creasy, does go ahead with the closing down of the captive bread industry. Um, first of all, I, I fear where these lions would end up. I mean, the, the odd chances of them ending up in a wild place, that is what we're working on right now or advocating for. Um, but I, I believe that at the end of the day, they're gonna end up in another captive facility. Um, which they like to call a sanctuary. Um, so a sanctuary is not allowed to breed. Um, so they, so they, they're gonna end up in captive facilities in any way, if, if we don't get them to wild spaces. But there's certainly, there are a lot of captive bred lions, which I believe would be genetically sound for rewilding projects, where there, where there is a need for augmentation of, of lion populations. But it it will always remain controversial because the, there's always this thing, this question that pops up about trophy hunting. Um, and it's, it's, it's the elephant in the room. So I might as well address it. Um, you know, whether people find trophy hunting to be a valuable conservation tool or not, um, once again, I think, um, do research before you form an opinion and leave emotion out of it. Um, but yes, lions, lions are hunted all over Africa. Sure enough, captive bred lions are being bred for the sole purpose of generating revenue. I don't think anyone will be able to convince me that any lion breeder currently in the industry or in the past bred lions for conservation purposes. It is a bonus that we have tested the hypothesis that it could be done. I believe, I strongly believe that captive bread lines can be used for rewilding if it is done correctly and if they are released in a, in a, in a suitable area. And if the reason for, the, the initial reason 
for the disappearance of lions in that area is that if that is alleviated first then we can talk about rewilding lions in those areas it, sure enough if if we go down the road of rewilding captive bred lions some of them might end up in large hunting concessions in in africa i'm, I'm sure they will because <clears throat> lions move around and fair enough i agree that some of them might at the end of their days um, get hunted which might not be acceptable to some people uh, specifically those who are opposed to any form of hunting it, it is important that we that we get to be we as an industry as as, as open-minded scientists and as participants in the wildlife industry of South Africa that we get to be a part of the decision that gets made about the industry because if if the captive breeding of lions gets closed down my opinion is that would be the first domino of closing down the entire industry which would be a very sad day for conservation and our grandkids will cry about that day the the industry breeds with impala buffalo sable roan bontebok blesbok you know, all of those species are being bred in captive type situations. So, first of all, we need to define what, what is captive bred. You know, how, how small does an enclosure have to be before you call it captive? It's a phrase that confuses a lot of people. When I say to you captive breeding, you're thinking uh, six by six meter cage where a lion can't barely turn around you know that's 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 not the fact um, the, the wildlife industry <clears throat> started out by protecting wildlife for their monetary value and the monetary value lies in the utilization of the end product which is their meat in the monetary value of putting them on a price list to be hunted i mean that that's where the monetary value comes from and also from the value that they have in attracting photographic tourists i mean there's certainly a monetary value in that no doubt so what i'm saying is that if the captive captive lion industry is being closed down why don't we just close down the entire wildlife industry you know, if, if we're breeding buffalo, I know hundreds of guys who breed buffalo in, in camps um, way smaller than the natural range of a buffalo herd. Um, and they take out the males, the bulls, at a certain age, they put them in a large enough area which is ethical or lawful or legitimate to hunt in, and they get hunted. That, so that's why they're being bred. And that's exactly the same as for lions. So can hunting and captive breeding is, is it's two phrases that gets confused very uh, deliberately, I believe, by the media. And um, canned hunting is illegal um, anyway. I doubt that there would still be canned hunting taking place in South Africa. Maybe I'm a little bit naive. But it is, nevertheless, it's unlawful and you, um, you, you may not do it. Captive breeding, on the other hand, you apply for with a management plan and an application and inspections from the provincial departments uh, of your premises. And you, you, you need to give in a good sized management plan uh, explaining your business model and showing your third party insurance that you have taken out for the safety of your neighbors and their property and, and so forth and so forth and so forth. There are many laws governing um, captive breeding of lions and I'm, I'm certainly not advocating for the captive breeding of lions. That is, that is not what I'm doing right now and it, it was never the intention of the study as well. The study, like I said in the beginning, um, you know, it, it was kind of a byproduct of a project that became successful in any ways. S buying and selling of captive bred lions is still it's, it's still a business in South Africa. So um, 
yeah, because it's still lawful uh, and it still does occur on a daily basis, especially through the hunting season. Most of them obviously get bought for, for the hunting industry. Um, I believe less and less so for our international clients or guests um, because of the restrictions on, on imports. Okay, how can people contribute or support your work beyond buying the book and prints? Right now, I, I don't think I'm the one that needs support. I, th I think the wildlife industry needs support from like-minded and open-minded people. Um, <clears throat> sure, I have some. I have come up with some good ideas that we are working on. Um, hopefully, we get some some lion conservation projects going in the near future. Um, very hopeful of that. Very excited for that, specifically on the West African lion population, which is in a lot of trouble and needs a lot of help. Um, but you know, once again, I, I don't think I need the help. I think. What I would like to see is, is really people doing research beyond the mainstream media and trusting science, asking questions um, before they form any sorts of opinion about conservation and specifically conservation in Africa. I think conservation in Africa is something very different to conservation in any, area, any other area um, in the world. Um, we in South Africa, I believe we have one of the best conservation models. It's just not always implemented correctly, but we have a solid, solid conservation model. I expect people to not only buy the book and the photographs, but, but read the book and tell the story, carry the message over. Um, that, that would be important to me. data from the satellite colors we used to analyze the spatial and temporal use of the reserve by the lions and that we did through running the data uh, downloaded from the colors through a, a GIS program um, and that allowed us to create maps of where the lions focused their time and also how that overlapped between the different individuals as well as the groups, which also gave us a lot of information on their social structure and their preference for specific areas. This is an example of one of the prints that we are offering. Um, you can find the entire catalog on our website, plbforlions.org. The prints feature the characters uh, of the book, which are the lions that formed part of the project, the captive bred lions that we released on an exquisite uh, wildlife reserve um, and has made quite a story. The photos are printed on very high quality photo paper framed in this beautiful natural African wood and covered by glass uh, for long longevity. We have a large variation of different photos you can choose from as well as different sizes to accommodate the interior design and complement the interior design of your lodge or office or, um, where, or your home. It, it, it could be in your home as well. These photographs are favorites that I chose personally from a selection of thousands of photos that were taken during the project. Um, purchasing one of these prints would contribute to the greater conservation of African lions. Most of the photos will also be published in the book uh, that I mentioned and the book is already available for pre-order on the website. I am Dr. Paul Boyens. Thank you so much for your time to learn more about lion conservation and the rewilding of captive bred lions. And thank you so much for your support. Yeah, so uh, Vicky, I met uh, during a, I think we were dotting cheetah for a conservation program. And we um, 
yeah, I, I saw the quality of her work. I was I, I was really impressed by what she'd done. When we were busy still writing the book, um, we decided that it would be a brilliant idea to not only add the nicest photos in the book, but get um, large fine prints framed of some of the best pictures. And I spoke to Vicky about it. And obviously her being a professional photographer made my photos look inferior. So she kindly suggested that she add some to the selection, which you'll see if, if you browse through through them, you'll see that some of them, well, actually most of them were, were taken by Vicky herself. You know, to sum it up, it was easy to work with her. Um, she's a easygoing person, uh, fun personality. She really knows and understands digital marketing and obviously photography, as you, as you can see in the catalog. Um, so yeah, hopefully this wasn't the end of the road for collaborating with her. Um, you guys can follow Vicky, follow her on Instagram. She's quite busy on social media, I'm sure with, with good reason. Um, but definitely, definitely a, a very pleasant experience from my side. Um, I learned a lot from her. I think my, my pictures will be better in the future. And um, yeah, some, some fond memories made.